Fora TV. The world is thinking. It turns out that back in 1982, chemists working in Colorado more or less perfected at the time a chemistry called phosphoramidite chemistry. And what this means is you can buy in jars chemicals today which are derived from sugarcane. And these chemicals end up being the four bases of DNA, or phosphoramidites, in a form that can be uh, readily assembled. So four of these bottles up at the top here, one would be a bottle of A, T, C, and G, and so on. And you hook these bottles up to a machine. Into the machine comes information from a computer, a sequence of DNA, T, A, A, T, A, whatever you'd like to build. And that machine will stitch the genetic material together from scratch. So if you've ever seen Star Trek, where they have the food replicating system, and, you know, I'd like a pumpkin spiced mocha or a latte or something, and you can compile that from the warp energy drive, or I don't know exactly how it works. Uh, DNA synthesis is the equivalent technology. You take information and material and you compile, you take information in the raw chemicals, you compile genetic material. It's, practically speaking, the coolest, most impressive slash scary technology I've encountered. DNA is complicated. So if we were to do all our genetic engineering at this level of resolution, TAA, TA, CGA, CTC, ACTA, TA, GGA, GA, it would become tedious, uh, if not um, unreliable. It would be akin, perhaps, uh, the analogy is not perfect, uh, perhaps like programming a computer in machine language. At some point, uh, it might be good to know how to do that, but oftentimes people would like to program at a higher level. And so some of these ideas, like abstraction of genetic componentry, involves the idea of taking these different layers of function, the DNA layer, and putting on top of that a parts layer, where we could call genetic objects that just do something, and you don't have to know all of the sequence information. And then we might be able to build still higher level functional objects, like a device that could receive or send information, or smell like bananas, or make a balloon. And then maybe we could have a system, uh, makes a drug, swims around, finds a tumor, and attacks it, who knows? If we could pull this off, what we'd end up with is a future in which some people could um, become expert systems engineers in biology. They could start to design and build organisms, and they wouldn't actually need to know down at the bottom that DNA was made up of four bases, let alone anything about phosphoramidite chemistry. They would compile down via tools to the sequence level, ship that information over, somebody would print the DNA, they'd get their DNA program back, they'd run it. Turns out we're working on this. Uh, there's a registry of standard biological parts at this website. Today you can get 3,500 BioBrick DNA parts. They're freely available if you work at a research university. That's simply because the legal system uh, requires uh, we distribute these parts under what's known as the research exemption. This collection of parts is growing geometrically. So two months ago it was 2,000 parts. We just had students come in with 1,500 more. Students do things like this, uh, showing up in the lab dissatisfied with the bouquet of E. coli, how it smells, they decide to reprogram its stench. If the cell is growing, smell like wintergreen, otherwise print banana smell. You could find a part that they made, J45200, there's a DNA sequence. Uh, when you put that sequence of DNA into a bacteria, it smells like bananas. They were sufficiently uh, accomplished as teenagers, first and second year undergraduates, that they went live after a couple months with a smell test demo. Uh, 